Hi, I'm Ross Curtis with the Ancestry DNA Science team. And we get a lot of questions about our Ancestry DNA ethnicity estimate. As people dive in and try and understand what it means and figure out what it means to their personal journey as they try and discover who they are. And so today I'd like to dive in a little bit more into the science behind this estimate and hope that this will help you understand a little bit more how to interpret your results. All right, so here's just a, an overview of your estimate. It might look something like this, and you can see at the high level that you have some regions um, in, in Europe or in other parts of the world that we have said that you have some ethnicity. Well, let's talk a little bit about how we got here and how you can interpret these results. So in order to understand what's going on with your ethnicity estimate, let's talk a little bit about the reference panel. This reference panel is a collection of people from around the world. We have 26 different regions where we've collected sa DNA samples from people who have a long history in a particular region. For example, we might have someone who has had all four of their grandparents, or all eight of their great-grandparents born in Norway or in the British Isles. Once we have these samples of people who have spent a long time living in that region, then we can make the assumption that their DNA is representative of people who have lived there for a long time. Now that we have the DNA from those reference panel individuals, we can compare your DNA to that reference panel. When you submit your saliva sample, we look at over 700,000 markers for you that we've also tested on our reference panel. An important thing to know about each of those markers is that each marker has a different frequency in different populations. So while every population might have differences in that marker, those differences are going to be at a different frequency, or they might be more common in some populations than others. In this example here that I'm showing, there's an allele R. And you can see that in Europe East, that big R is very common. But in Asia Central, it's actually not very common. That doesn't mean that allele R tells us automatically that you're from Europe East because some people in other parts of the world still have that allele. But it's this frequency, how common that DNA is, that's important. So once we have all of these different markers, we can start to come up with the most likely explanation for your DNA given what we see in our reference panel. So that, what that means is that your ethnicity estimate is our best guess of how much ethnicity you have from each of these regions. It is the most likely explanation for what we are seeing in your DNA. And here I've just shown the final equation that we use. And in our white paper, we break down how we get to this equation, starting with the frequency of DNA in each population. Now, it's important to know that with this likelihood-based method, we, you could have slightly different answers depending on what your input and your reference panel is. And so to take into account for that, we run what's called bootstrapping. And what that means is that we run your analysis to calculate your ethnicity estimate 40 times, each time using a slightly different selection of these genetic markers. Once we've run that test 40 different times, we then have 40 estimates for each region. So for example, this might be Great Britain, and you might have sometimes as low as 40% predicted ethnicity from Great Britain, and sometimes as much as 70%. Once we have these 40 runs, we can then calculate the average, which might be 55%, and then look at the range, which it could include how low that estimate might go and how high that estimate might go. In this other example, this individual has, was predicted to have 5% Scandinavian. In some runs, the individual is predicted to have no Scandinavian at all, and in other runs, the individual is predicted to have as much as 20%. But it's the range that really tells us how likely it is that that person inherited DNA from Scandinavia. So when you interpret your results, make sure to click on each of the regions and to look at that range. Pay close attention to whether or not the range includes zero, because if the range includes zero, then that means that sometimes our algorithm found that you didn't have any ethnicity from that region at all. Also remember that DNA is common in a lot of different populations. So when we're looking at a telling apart Great Britain from France or from Scandinavia, it's a lot harder because the frequencies of the DNA are much more similar in those regions.
whereas telling apart Great Britain from, say, Native America is a much easier problem. Also remember that these are just estimates and that they will change as we get more data and understand better population genetics. Finally, one other thing to think about when you look at your ethnicity and compare it with your siblings or your parents is that even if we could do ethnicity perfectly, that wouldn't mean that you would have the same ethnicity as your siblings. Because of how genetic inheritance works, you only get half of your mom's DNA and you only get half of your dad's DNA. That means that you have different DNA than your siblings do. And so even if we were to call it perfectly, you would expect some variation in our ethnicity estimates between you and your siblings. Right, so everything that I've talked about today is actually available right online from your ethnicity estimate page. So if you go in there and you're looking at your ethnicity estimate, notice at the top right hand corner there's a button with a question mark on it. If you click on that, that will take you to the Ancestry DNA Ethnicity Help and Tips. And you can browse through these questions, look at what you're interested in, learn more about our reference panel or about how the range is calculated and, or what we think is a typical native. I also encourage you to read our white paper if you want to understand more exactly how the algorithm works to compare your DNA to this reference panel to come up with that estimate. Thank you for your interest in Ancestry DNA, and we're, we're excited that there are so many questions about this and how it's working, and I hope that this has been helpful for you as you try to understand more what your ethnicity estimate means to you.